Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and today I'm on Annihilation mode. Just so you know. The article that we're gonna review today is, well, from Cracked.com, of course, but it's, I don't even know, I, I can't even think of an adjective to use to describe this article. Oh, Metatron, wow, you're such a linguist, you're a professional linguist, you know so many languages, I can't even think of a, yeah, you're great, you're great. Fantastic. Let's just jump right into it. 21 of the weirdest things that were normal in medieval times. Get ready. Medieval times were, like, really weird. Oh my gosh, already the the syntax. It's not even a matter of the contents. We, we haven't even got to that part yet. It's the way they are written. Oh, it pisses me off. What is that? Gen, Gen Z? Gen Alpha? I don't even know anymore. Let's call them Generation Digital Natives. The same people that have ushered in a veritable apocalypse of the English language. Their writing, if one can even dignify it with such a term, is a grotesque pastiche of abbreviated atrocities, syntactical abominations and lexical nightmares that will make Strunk and White spin in their graves. Let's continue. Medieval times were, like, really weird. For entertainment, they watched the guys with metal suits stub other guys on horses. Everyone ate giant turkey. Pepsi was served in brilliantly decorated mugs. Wait, comma, no, full stop. We are describing the theme restaurants. Okay, no, I, I just can't do it. Look at the casual disregard for the most basic rules of the English language. Subject verb agreement, an antiquated concept apparently. The correct use of apostrophes, a relic of the bygone era. And whenever we talk about these articles, well don't even get me started of the treatment of the poor, defenseless semicolon. How about how to use a comma properly? It's as if this new generation of article writers have declared open war to punctuation. I mean, look at that, syntactically speaking, their sentences are a labyrinth of run-ons, fragments, and misused modifiers that would make even the most patient English teacher implode. Coherence, if there ever was such a thing, is clearly being sacrificed on the altar of brevity, with complex ideas being reduced to a string of emojis and acronyms that would require a PhD in cryptography to be deciphered. Not to mention that lexically, the current generation of vocabulary is a curious amalgamation of internet slang, meme speak, and bastardized neologisms that seem to have been designed to be completely incomprehensible for anyone above the age of 25, while the word literally has been stripped of all meaning through chronic misuse. <sighs> where, where were we? But the historical era was probably a wild ride too. No TikTok, no Target, no Popeye. Okay, you, you, you didn't just write that. I haven't even finished paragraph one. In fact, this is the hook. <laughs> Let's continue reading, I suppose. You know what? No, I'm gonna go on a full linguistic rant right now and don't you dare complain about it because remember, you caused this. The writing in this article is a veritable treatment to the law of linguistic entropy, a steady descent into communicative chaos. It's as if the writers of these articles have managed to take something that happens organically and naturally, so the evolution of a language, and just put it in reverse, transforming any attempt at communication into what I would call the indecipherable hieroglyphs of the digital age. Good luck finding a Rosetta Stone for that one, you muppet. Oh, Metatron, but you're so pedantic, pedantic, it's pedantry, you're, you're the reincarnation of pedantic, pedantic. You don't know pedantic. You've never seen pedantic in your life life. You want to see pedantic? I'm going to show pedantic. I'm going to show you pedantic. Let's dissect this linguistic abomination. We begin with a sentence that perfectly encapsulates the decay of formal English language. Already at the very beginning of the sentence we can observe the misuse of the word like, utilized as a filler word which is a hallmark of colloquial speech, jarringly out of place in what purports to be a historical description. The vague descriptor weird lacks specificity and academic rigor, failing to convey any meaningful information about the, you know, medieval period. This sentence here is what I would call a masterclass in oversimplification and misuse of the informal register. Note, for example, the repeated use of the word guys to describe knights and combatants which strips away all historical context and gravitas. The verb stab is clearly reductive, failing to capture the complexity of medieval combat. The syntax, while being grammatically acceptable, is clearly painfully simplistic. Here we have a sweeping generalization that commits the logical fallacy of hasty generalization. The use of everyone is hyperbolic and historically inaccurate. Moreover, the anachronistic reference to Turkey, a new world bird in a European medieval context, is glaringly erroneous. Pepsi, 
Did you just say Pepsi to me? Well, this sentence is also abruptly introducing a blatant anachronism without any transitional element, clearly ending up creating cognitive dissonance for the reader. In fact, I would say that the juxtaposition of a modern soft drink with medieval accountants is jarring and nonsensical. In conclusion, I would consider this paragraph to be a masterclass on how not to approach historical analysis. It is a magnificent testimony to the author's attempts at wit, which failed as flat as the earth isn't. Is that a double negative? I think it's influencing me. The interjection, wait, comma, no, marks a sudden shift in the narrative perspective, in a way breaking the fourth wall in a manner more suited to casual conversation than article writing. Furthermore, the usage of we're introduces a first-person plural perspective that was absent in the present text, creating an inconsistent narrative voice. Now let's spend a few seconds evaluating the author's attempt at humour. What appears evident is that the author was trying to use subversion of expectation However, that fails flat, due to poor execution. Allow me to elaborate. Instead of utilizing a clever bait and switch, which is what I think they were trying to attempt, we are left with a disjointed paragraph that fails both as historical commentary and as comedy. How you manage that is beyond me. But what you have not failed to do, dear writer, and in fact you succeeded marvelously, was to create a testament of the corrosive influence of casual internet writing on more formal genre. A stark reminder of why maintaining linguistic standards and coherence is crucial for effective communication, particularly in the absence of linguistic cues. In the next sentence we see that we begin with the opening conjunction but, which implies some sort of contrast with the previous statement, yet it stands isolated, briefed of context. This syntactical faux pas is in fact compounded by the vague reference to the historical era, a phrase so broad as to be completely meaningless. Which era, pray tell? Are we talking about the Mesolithic period? Are we talking about the Mesozoic? The Bronze Age? This author's temporal imprecision is matched only by the lexical vapidity. And don't even get me started on the expression wild ride, an egregious intrusion of modern vernacular in what was supposed to be or purported to be historical commentary. Not to mention that the hedge probably further undermines any pretense of academic rigor, suggesting a level of uncertainty more befitting a magic eight ball than a scholarly treatise. In conclusion, this extract is a linguistic travesty that manages to violate principles of historical accuracy, register consistency and narrative coherence in five fucking sentences. Oh, but Metatron, you're using difficult words. You're not making yourself understood. Okay, look at it this way. This extract is to historical writing what a plastic fork is to fine dining. Functional at a basic level, I'll give you that, but utterly lacking in sophistication and merit. <sighs> You're still here, call me impressed, because this is just the beginning. And let me remind you, just in case you forgot, all of this is your fault. So don't leave a like, don't leave any comments, do not watch until the end, and absolutely do not share, or you'll force me to continue making these videos. You'll pay for this. No comments. No, 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 but let's continue, please, please. We've got a full article to read, so yeah, yeah, let's go. Become a content creator, they said. No TikTok, no Target, no Popeye. Wait, 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 hold, hold, hold the line. Hold the line. Shield wall! Oh, this is beautiful. You know what I would consider this? This is, this is art. This is a form of art. We are encountering what I would call a tricolumn of anachronistic negations. TikTok, a digital petri dish for the cultivation of vapid content and the erosion of attention span. A representation of nadir within human communication. If anything, I'd say that its absence in history is a blessed state to be envied. I never have keys to jingle when I need them. Look at it! It's a rhetorical device as misplaced as a freaking smartphone during the signing of the Magna Carta. The author, in their infinite wisdom, has chosen to define an historical period not by what it possesses, but by what it lacked. And not by any lacking, but the absence of 21st century corporate entities and digital platforms. So let's begin our vituperation with the first item of this list, TikTok. The author, in their clumsy attempt at humour, has inadvertently stumbled upon a profound truth. This, however, should not be considered as a drawback, but as a veritable boon to the human species. But since you're here and you've got nothing better to do, how about we focus on the latter part of this wonderful statement about what's missing in the medieval period, namely Popeyes. I would say that the inclusion of Popeyes in this triad of supposed historical deficiencies is a culinary non sequitur of 
staggering proportions. To imply that the lack of this particular fast food establishment of any constitutes a meaningful deprivation for our ancestors is to engage in a form of gastronomic ethnocentrism. But please, by all means, continue to lament the absence of highly processed, deep-fried poultry in the medieval period, will you? While you're at it, why don't you discuss about the absence of plastics in the Stone Age? I think the only possible speculative state that has to do with American fast food in conjunction with the medieval period is that, considering the enormous amounts of sodium, we would have had at least 15 crusades. Make it 45, will you? <sighs> I'm never gonna finish this article, am I? What did people even do? They went completely out of their ever-loving minds. That's what? When user ask a reddit what is something that was normal in medieval times but would be weird today the history buffs on reddit proved that in spades right let's see what they've got to say number 21 fight instead of divorce yeah that would look a little weird today wouldn't it number 20 duels over a bride at a wedding that's not called weird it's called a man 19 wearing a codpiece what's wrong with wearing a codpiece i think codpieces are great 16. Using stale bread as plates. Well, actually the, actually, the majority of medieval people, whether it be peasants or knights, would have used either wooden plates or maybe tin plates if they were a little wealthy. Even though it's not wrong to say that some people in some occasions in the medieval period did use bread as a form of a replacement for plates, it was specifically baked for it, so it wasn't stale, and it was done only when you had a very big banquet, and it was just made more sense to do that, and then you would just give those bread plates and just give them to the people, lacking a little context there. What did you expect? I'm going crazy. 12. Having rules about what colours and what type of clothing and hats you could wear based on your occupation or social level. Well, not exactly the same today, of course, but then again, good luck if you are not upper class buying a Birkin. Number 11. Hue and cry, literally shouting that someone stole something and having the whole village chase after them. Well, we still do that, but amplified by a million considering the internet and the court of public opinion. Number 10. Males playing females' parts in plays because women weren't allowed to professionally, I imagine it made the Shakespeare plays where characters were men pretending to be women, then pretending to be men, even more ridiculous. I don't, I'm not even gonna comment on this one. Number nine, displays of attraction between men in the medieval period, including hugging, platonic kissing, mate, what? were normal. Well, hugging is absolutely normal depending on where you're from. I mean, here in America, I see guys hugging all the time. And when it comes kissing on the cheek, well, we do it in, in Europe between men. I mean, it's not like a full-on kiss. We just do this really wasn't this supposed to be something that was not present today but was present in the medieval period <laughs> this person is what planet do you live in number five gruesome executions that look uh, took a while to actually kill someone seriously medieval people what the fuck is it with sentencing people to be burnt at the stake or crucified or drawn and quartered with rather than people i would say that women weren't drawn and quartered they were drawn and burnt just to give a little but yeah though well, you know i agree with you in fact i've got a video the top 10 most horrible ways to execute people both in the medieval period and in the classical age coming up soon or did i already publish that i don't even know where i'm at well if i did link in the description <laughs> professional youtube we're right there number two public baths uh, not on the same scale as they were in rome but it was still pretty common to have a bathhouse in medieval germany and surrounding places to bathe in a group in a large tub of hot fragrant water called a okay well sure i mean in europe we don't really go as often to public baths anymore but I mean in Japan they do but yeah well yeah pedantic is what you got if you call me pedantic you get pedantic number one wearing cloaks well, hold on a minute what's wrong with cloaks I don't understand why cloaks are amazing oh okay there we go punctuation punctuation I don't understand why full stop cloaks are amazing <laughs> exclamation mark we should bring cloaks back I absolutely agree and your punctuation is horrible all right number ones but I think you have taken enough of my time today already for this so please make sure this video doesn't get more than 10,000 views so I can stop this make it 5,000 200 views. A complete catastrophe. Until then, thank you for watching. Please take a moment to check out my Patreon page. With as little as a $5 support, you can help us ensure that we can continue to produce high quality and high researched content. And at the same time, you get access to polls, extra videos, unlisted streams, and much more. Thank you so much.